Dr. Bloomer, what is oxidative stress and how is it related to inflammation? The oxidative stress really is an imbalance between the production of free radicals, what we refer to as react reactive oxygen species, um, and the antioxidant defense mechanism in such a way that the uh, free radicals overwhelm antioxidant defense. Now, antioxidant okay. defense can be um, comprised of endogenous antioxidants, certain enzymes or other antioxidants that we have within our body, as well as exogenous antioxidants that okay. we may consume through whole foods as well as some nutritional supplements. All right, so the antioxidants are being overwhelmed by the free radicals in the oxidative stress situation, is that Correct. what you're saying? Right. So when that situation arises in which the production of these radicals overwhelms the body's ability to protect against these radicals, we may see oxidation of important molecules such as proteins, lipids, DNA, mm -hmm. uh, glutathione, etc. And we know that that increase in the oxidation of those biomolecules is associated, not necessarily a cause and effect, but okay. is associated with a variety of human diseases. In fact, some individuals have gone so far as to say all human disease is associated with oxidative stress and the accompanying inflammation. Because typically we see an inflammatory response which okay. may produce more free radicals um, in association with the oxidized molecules that we might measure. So individuals that are measuring, for example, markers of inflammation such as C-reactive mm -hmm. protein oftentimes will show a similar increase in some other molecule like F2 isoprostane, which is a lipid-specific biomarker of oxidative stress. But it's, again, it's a, it's a relationship. There's uh -huh. not necessarily a cause and effect. We okay. don't know okay. whether or not the ROS are causing the disease. Perhaps the individuals with disease simply present with higher levels of these ROS. So there's some animal studies suggesting more of a cause and effect relationship, mm -hmm. but those sort of data, to my knowledge, are not currently available in humans. And what is the main cause of oxidative stress? Or are there many, many causes? Yeah, there really are. I mean, we can get into environmental causes. Okay. Uh, for example, ozone, cigarette smoke is one. We've shown that in several of our studies, as well as other investigators Cigarette smoke, that. Huh? Absolutely. Oh. There's one thing that I can get across to listeners <laughs> right okay. now is that if you're a cigarette smoker, it doesn't simply have to be an active smoker. We know that there are data in passive cigarette smokers, but cigarette smoke exposure is associated with a significant increase in the production of radical species, which does indeed, number one, cause an increase in the oxidation of important molecules, and secondary to that, it causes a significant depletion in the body's endogenous antioxidant protective mechanism. So that would be one population okay. when we talk about are antioxidants necessary for individuals? There's some debate over that. Mm -hmm. I think it would really have to be specific to the population and what the individuals are exposed to. But certainly individuals who are smokers, and if you're a diabetic who's a cigarette smoker, mm -hmm. um, I think the situation is, is more clear. Individuals likely need some sort of assistance, and that assistance may come from you know, a good quality blended antioxidant. But in addition to environmental um, causes, we know right. that physical stress absolutely causes an increase in radical species, i.e. exercise. Mm -hmm. Now some individuals get confused by that because they right. simply say, well, I thought exercise was good. But what's yeah, important to keep that, in mind yes, yeah. sure, is that a slight and transient short-term increase in the production of radicals seems to act as a triggering mechanism or a signal to allow for the body to upregulate its own natural endogenous antioxidant enzyme production. That's very important because the increase that we see in these ROS with acute exercise is relatively short-lived. Individuals who are exposed to chronic cigarette smoke, they have these elevated biomolecules chronically all throughout the day. So a short-term increase in ROS production, for example, coming from regular strenuous exercise, mm -hmm. appears actually to be a positive in that it allows our body to sense the need to increase its own endogenous okay. antioxidant protective mechanisms mm -hmm. so that when you are exposed to other assaults that mm -hmm. cause the increase in ROS, that you're better protected during those times.
And that's really important for people to understand. Okay. We don't want people saying, well, I'm not going to exercise now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Because of that condition, exercise is extremely beneficial. Mm -hmm. I would go so far as to say from a physical point of view, it's the most beneficial thing a person can do for themselves. Sure. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome.